Welcome, my name is Taryn from Elegant Upgrades and I flip furniture to be able to buy a house. So that's the goal. This video is going to be a little different. I've got this table and it is super, super wobbly. So I'm going to show you how to completely disassemble it and put it back together so that it is perfect and structurally sound and so the next owners don't have to worry about anything with it. So as you can see, there's several glue blocks on the bottoms, most of them aren't stuck anymore they're stuck to one side but not the other so they're not doing anything and there's like these mini mini corbels there so those were glued in and also had tiny tack nails in them so what i'm doing here is i'm using my little scraper it's a very very thin scraper so i get it in between the wood and what i'm doing is pulling it out so it pulls the teeny tiny pin nails out and then pushing the wood back in and that way I can grab the nail head with my pliers because the nail heads were way up in there because they were pin nails. So basically you're just taking the entire thing apart one piece at a time and trying as much as possible to damage as little as possible. Um, so this was missing quite a few of those little mini corbel pieces. They're just kind of, kind of like additional glue blocks, but they're fancy. So I kept the ones that were in the best shape and then the other ones I got rid of because it's gonna be so secure by the time I'm done with it. I don't need them for structure, but I do like the way that they look. So I just applied them in a manner that they would look good and look like everything was there, even though it's not. Okay, so the previous owners or set of this table is very very old so it's probably been through a numerous amounts of of owners but since it was so wobbly at one point somebody had put a nail head in here so what I'm doing here is I have an actual nail remover but I don't want to damage the wood or I'm trying to damage it as little as possible so I take my metal scraper there I hold it and that's helping me keep the wood from getting too damaged as I'm bending back on the nail head. And then once I get it out enough, I can take, I just have a small hammer here. And again, I keep the scraper there and it really helps keep the wood intact so I'm not getting gouges or anything into the wood. And also keep in mind, this is really, really sped up. So take your time. And now I'm just going through and taking out all the screws. There were quite a few screws in these legs um, and they seem to be original. They're very old. They seem to be dated with the table and they were the flathead. So typically that's a good indicator that it's old and just the shape of them kind of made me think that they came original with the table. So these ones we're going to keep. Obviously we're not going to keep that giant nail that was in the top. And you just literally go through and take everything apart that you can. I love this little scraper. I have other ones. This one is just really flexible, so I feel like I'm not damaging too much, and it's also very thin, so it lets me get in between things without kind of messing them up. And then when I need something a little bit stronger, I can use a screwdriver, but I don't like to use a screwdriver initially because, like I said, I don't want to be damaging the wood. So this one, as you can see, had another nail in it, but they had kind of shellacked over the top of it on the top, so I didn't even see it in there. And the nails are splitting the wood because, you know, they're not meant to be nailed down in from the top of the table. But it's fine. We're going to get that all fixed up. So if you are new to this, a really good thing to do is label each of your legs with a piece of say like painters tape or anything like that that you can kind of put numbers on and match the numbers to each other otherwise i i'm gonna remember where everything goes plus i have it on video if i forget i didn't but it's just something you can do if you are kind of new and a little bit worried about forgetting where pieces go just number each of them it's a little piece of tape and then you can take it off later so this is one of my most favorite things. It is a paint scraper. I use it for finishes that are super damaged like that and I'm just taking it off while it's off because it'll be easier to, to do while it's not attached to that tiny table. And then here, I showed you the splits in the top before. We're going to repair those. So I'm getting some glue in there and we're gonna clamp it up and I actually leave these overnight so that I make sure that it's really, really solidly stuck there. 
If you didn't know, an actual glue joint is stronger than wood, so that's a fun fact. Um, I've actually done a test with that. Maybe I'll show a video on it later on, maybe in like shorts or something like that, but it's really interesting how strong a glue joint is versus just a piece of wood. And here I'm actually just using a bit of glue to fill in the nail hole. Okay, so I'm using my Chalk Mountain Furniture Cleaner and I'm just gonna go ahead and give this whole thing a clean. I'm going to be priming this piece, so I'm not terribly worried about making sure everything is perfect. I just wanted to make sure it was really smooth and I got off any finish that was kind of not, not good anymore. It's just gonna mess up my paint job. So I got off anything that was kind of just flaking off and a little too crusty. So now we can start doing all the fun stuff. And by fun stuff, I mean getting close to reassembling. Inside all these joints where it was attached, there is still glue residue. So you need to take a scraper of some kind here. I'm using my screwdriver because it's the only thing that I had that was small enough to fit in there. And I didn't want to use a chisel just for fear of damaging the wood. So you do want to scrape out all of those joints and make sure that they're clean so that when you do reattach them, they're solid and they're getting a good connection. And I know this video is a bit different than my other stuff, but I was doing this table and I think it's an important part of the process and I didn't want to add it to what this table is going to be later. <laughs> you can see that in my video next week, but I think this is important and something, you know, good to see. And I didn't want to add on, you know, 15 minutes to, to a painting video. So I just had a little extra glue there that I'm scraping off so that I have a smooth surface to get back in those holes. And then two of these legs had decorative features on there. So that's what I'm doing there is kind of putting those back in the right spots. So here's my little jar. If you don't keep jars around you for all your pieces, you need to. It's just so much easier to keep everything together for a specific piece. So everything that came off of this piece went into that little jar. And so I can either use it or not, but I have it all there if I, if I need it. So you're kind of working in reverse order now. However you kind of took it apart is going to be the opposite of how you're putting it back together. These screws are one of the last steps, so it's, it's obviously one of the first things I'm going to do to get it in there. So I was just testing that part out. I'm going to add the glue to all four of these joints and then I can screw them back in. And that way I know that the screws are going to hold it while the glue setting up and that is going to be a really secure section on the table. I'm actually surprised that this table was as wobbly as it was because it had the two tiers and I just, I mean, that's how old it is, I guess, that all the glue broke free of every single part on this to where they felt that they had to drive the largest nails I've ever seen through the top of the table. <laughs> Again, there I was just checking to make sure that I had the right leg because two of them have a decorative finish on them. And then you do want to make sure that you're gluing both sides of where they're touching. So I'm gluing the leg joint and then also gluing the table.
Can you guys see my brain working when I go to set each one in? Okay, so there I was making sure that that was the right leg. And since these, the lower tables, slide into the little notches there, I have to make sure that I have room. So I obviously can only get in two legs before I can get in the little tables there. Because if you put in all four legs, you obviously can't get in the lower tiers. And these, they had, they were originally glued, but then again, a previous owner had just driven other additional nails into them <laughs> wherever they wanted to, to try and make it not wobbly. And now we can add the final two legs and they'll just slide right in. So a lot of this is just trial and error and going, you know, slow. You can do a dry fit before you glue anything to make sure that you can get it back together and it's going the way that it should. But it just takes practice and time. But it is important to do this kind of stuff because you want to make sure that you're selling products that you know, are going to last. So here's the finished table once I got everything back on. It's super, super sturdy now. And here's a little preview of what we're gonna be working on next week. So tune in for that one. But I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you learned something and I will see you guys next week.